the companies that provided Cytotec are Cyril, Pharmacia, and Pfizer. So, isang banig. Gamot ito para sa sakit ng tiyan. Pero ito ay nakakalaglag ng bata sa sinapupunan. Kaya ipinagbabawal na ibenta kung walang reseta. Ano yun, anti-ulcer drug, ginagamit ng mga pasyente may ulcer. Pero sa aming obstetrician gynecologist, ginagamit namin yan for ripening ng cervix o para magbukas yung kwelyo ng matres at saka para magdilate. Pero hindi na, masyad, hindi na ginagamit ngayon kasi nga dahil marami masyadong side effects. Cytotec administration to women who are pregnant can cause abortion, premature birth, or birth defects. Uterine rupture has been reported when Cytotec was administered in pregnant women to induce labor or to induce abortion beyond the 8th week of pregnancy. Cytotec should not be taken by pregnant women to reduce the risk of ulcers induced by non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. Patients must be advised of the abortifacient poverty and warned not to give the drugs to others. Precautions Information for patients Women of childbearing potential using Cytotec to decrease the risk of NSAID-induced ulcers should be told that they must not be pregnant when Cytotec therapy is initiated and that they must use an effective contraception method while taking Cytotec. The patient should not give Cytotec to anyone else. Cytotec has been prescribed for the patient's specific condition, may not be the correct treatment for another person, and may be dangerous to the other person if she were to become pregnant. In this file, it is proven that Pfizer has produced drugs that can be very harmful to pregnant women. Even though drugstores have already stopped retailing Cytotec drugs, Pfizer has been allegedly accused of continuous production of Cytotec drugs to black markets, especially in Cabo, Manila. We were invited to film at one of Manila's major women's hospitals. They have to repair women who have been damaged by backstreet abortionists all the time. There have been stories of doctors working in state hospitals treating women who have gone through abortions badly. Uh, but women's rights groups have been working with these doctors, and at least at this hospital, the doctors' attitudes seem to have changed. This hospital deals with thousands of women who have undergone illegal abortions. So many, in fact, that it's had to set up a special ward for them. Many women are scared of coming to the hospital. The senior doctor, Alice Lean, said that they often left it so late they arrived on the verge of death. Most women who come here are bleeding profusely, they have infections, they're septic, they've tried to induce their own abortions by putting a bamboo uh, stick inside of them or a guava tree uh, branch inside of them, or they've used Cytotec, uh, which induces contractions. She said they kept the women safe from prosecution. Even though abortion is illegal in the Philippines, the doctor is telling me that this hospital does not report the induced abortions to the police because they, the women will get scared. They will stop coming to the hospital and uh, they'll just die out there when they get complications. I wanted to talk to some of the women in the ward about their experiences. I said we'd hide their faces, but they were still too terrified to speak to us. There have been admissions in the last 24 hours of women who've come in with complications uh, from induced abortions, and I've been trying to speak to them. To one in particular, a 17-year-old girl who came last night, but her family doesn't know that she went through an abortion, and she's petrified that her identity will be revealed and that somebody in her family will recognize her, so she's not agreeing to speak to me. Sorry. I'd arranged to go and see the man who's run Manila City for the last eight years, Mayor Lito Atienza. He is vehemently against abortion and he's responsible for banning contraceptives in government clinics in the city center. I'm at 
at Manila City Hall in Mayor Tienza's pro-life city. This is where religion and politics come together. Many people are still imbued with that, with that brainwashing that has gone on for decades, that the solution to poverty is birth control. I mean, that's the farthest, farthest solution to poverty. Contraceptive materials actually are poisoned to the woman's body. You, you look at your internet, it's even described as a pesticide. <laughs> Why should I be teaching people how to take pesticide? Even with the pro-life city and the national family planning, abortion seemed to be on the rise. What are you doing to tackle that? Well, I can imagine. If we were promoting birth control, abortion would be on a runaway figure like what's happening in Europe and the Western world. Failed contraception always results in abortion. But so now we have abortion, but it's still illegal. So people are careful not to indulge in it. Really, because I've spent a fair amount of time in Manila and I've been traveling through Manila and what I've seen is that more and more poor women are, are turning to abortion because they don't have enough... I, I don't agree with you. You're developing a bad impression and a wrong notion. I'm sorry about that. We still are, be, are able to maintain abortion at a very controlled level because it's an illegal criminal act in the Philippines. So you think that under your uh, term, um, the kind of abortion clinics have diminished? Of course, because the, the center of abortion materials in, right in downtown Manila has been erased around Quiapo Church. That was the biggest irony of it all. See, the abortion distributors, uh, abortion material distributors, were even stationed around the parish church, the central plaza of the city of Manila, for a long, long time. They're no longer there. They're on the run. And let's keep it that way. The mayor claimed that the market stalls around Chiapo Church that had sold abortion-inducing drugs had been cleared. But that's not what my sources told me. I've been told that this is the place to come to buy herbs and drugs for induced abortions. The stalls around here sell these herbs and a banned drug called Cytotec. It's very ironic because we're in the heart of Manila, which is a pro-life city. We're in front of a church. Um, the police station is right here and uh, the statue of an unborn child. I told one of the sellers that I was pregnant. She said for five pounds she could help me. Take this one and this one yeah. in the morning, these two again in the afternoon, and again this. Okay. Yeah, in the afternoon. Okay. 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 Yeah. okay. I just bought these pills. If a pregnant woman um, took two pills daily for three days, she would be able to induce her own abortion. In the square around the church, people were arriving for evening mass. Filipinos are living in two parallel worlds. In one world, they're devout Catholics. In the other, because of this devout Catholicism, they routinely use illegal abortion as a form of birth control. Isang tatawagin nating si Elena sa nakasubok bumili dito ng gamot na pampalaglag dahil hindi pa kasal sa kanyang nobyo at hindi pa handang maging ina, ginusto niyang ipalaglag ang sanggol sa kanyang sinapupunan. Hindi po alam ng magulang ko na ano, ganun yung nangyari sa akin na nagdadalan tao nga po ko. Dalawang buwan na raw ang kanyang tiyan ng una niyang subuking ilaglag ang bata. Halamang gamot daw ang kanyang ginamit pero hindi raw epektibo. Sabi po nila magtanong-tanong daw po ako sa baklaran, kaya nagpunta po ako ng baklaran. Tapos doon nga po ako nakakita ng mga ano, herbal. Yung sa ano, bote-bote lang ng mga herbal. Wala namang nangyari sa akin, ganun pa rin. Yung wala nang nangyari o hindi umapekto, bumalik ako doon sa ano, nagalok sa akin. Tapos yun nga, bumila ako ng may binigay po sa akin instruction. Nagtakumpay siya sa kanyang plano. Pero dahil ang gamot ay delikado, buhay niya mismo ang namiligro. Kinabukasan po yun. Hindi ko na parang nanginginig na po yung katawan ko. Kinukumbulsyon na po tapos dun. Halos tumirik na po yung mata ko. 
Doon, sinugod na na po nila ako sa ospital. Ang sabi ng doktor, yun nga daw po, yung bata daw po, sa sinapupunan ko, patay na nga daw po, kaya kailangan daw po kong iraas pa. The views of many American Catholic women on sexual issues seem clear. The National Survey of Family Growth says 97% of them have used modern contraception. The National Catholic Reporter shows that 58% believe they do not have to follow the teachings of their bishop on abortion. John O'Brien, president of Catholics for Choice, says he hopes the Pope is listening. And I hope that he uses the opportunity of being here in the United States to hear about to hear from people about some of the some of the difficulties and some of the problems and the challenges that we face in the Catholic Church. Abortion has long been a controversial issue in the United States. Reverend Arnie Panula is a priest in Washington and a member of Opus Dei, a conservative Catholic organization. He says the church's teaching on abortion is very clear. And and the principle the church is upholding here simply is it's never right to take an innocent life. You know, no matter how that child has been conceived, um, once the, you have life there, once you have a human life, the church holds you know, the sacredness of this life to be inviolable. The position of Catholics for Choice is that abortion is a private issue of conscience. It says a woman has a right to follow her conscience within church doctrine. If a woman decides, um, after really thinking and examining her conscience, that making, having an abortion is a moral and the right choice for her at that particular time. She is, in Catholic teaching, entitled to do it. It doesn't mean that abortion is a good thing within the Catholic Church. Since being installed as Pope, Benedict has consistently upheld the Church's policy on abortion and contraception. Vatican watchers say his views are unlikely to change. Jeff Swicord, VOA News, Washington. Up until now, Pfizer had denied accusations of producing side-detect drugs on black markets.